Hello everybody, this is Dr. Harshita. I'm a prosthodontist working as an assistant professor at Subaya Institute of Medical and Dental Sciences. So today's topic of discussion is diagnosis and treatment planning. So first let's know what is diagnosis. It is nothing but the determination of the nature of the disease. So once we know the diagnosis, we are trying to know what the disease exactly is and we have to come or we have to know another term called as prognosis. It, the prognosis is nothing but the predictable outcome of the disease. So how the disease might outcome like either it may be good, poor, bad or like excellent prognosis. So this is the two important terms which we have to know the diagnosis and prognosis and then later on depending on the diagnosis and prognosis we plan something the procedure of the treatment that is called as like treatment planning. So based on these two things we plan the treatment. So in the process of diagnosis we can determine the nature of the disease, how its onsets, what are the reasons for the disease, how it's going to uh, take the progression or the disease might get even worse or how we are going to have a control over the disease. So why is it so important to know the diagnosis or the prognosis or, or to have something called as a treatment plan in something called as directly we can a patient comes and we do what we can do whatever treatment we want. But uh, to have a better prognosis or to have a successful treatment, these are the essential tools required. So in the case of diagnosis, so we try to determine the nature and then coming to the prognosis, how well the patient takes up the uh, disease condition. Example, the prognosis, the major reasons for failure of a complete denture will be the inadequate diagnosis and the prognosis of the disease. So the moment we do inadequate things here, so there is more chance of a failure of a complete denture fabrication. So the diagnosis part involves three different uh, categories. That is the patient evaluation coming to the history taking, patient history taking, either it can be medical or dental history and then coming to the examination of the patient. Patient evaluation starts right from the beginning where the patient moment he enters the clinic. So the way we talk to the patient, even just uh, talking to the patient, the initial walk of the patient, these all particular things are evaluated by the dentist to know few very little uh, features or little points which have to be noted down during the diagnosis process. So as I said, the right from the beginning of the entry to of the patient. So first and foremost thing which we see is the gait of the patient. Why is it important as the dentist point of view or a prosthodontic point of view? So gait is nothing but the way the patient walks in. So the walking style of the patient tells a lot of things. Example, if the patient in the second picture, we can see a stooped shoulder of the patient. So the stooped shoulders of the patient or any tremors in the head of the patient will tell us something about the Parkinson's disease or about the spinal changes happening in the patient. And something called as a foot drop or dragging of some leg in example in the fourth picture. So this particular thing tells us that the patient has got something related to stroke changes. So these particular things are to be noted because from the prosthodontic view, we have different procedures like impression procedures, alternative impression procedures and the uh, precautions to be taken during the jaw relation recordings for such particular patients. If he is having any spinal changes or if he is having any Parkinson's diseases, something related to Bell's palsy or some cerebral uh, related changes, we do little alterations in the impression procedures. Like example, we might use a tray of smaller dimension or a special tray for the particular impression technique. And then we can also during the jaw relations as the uh, bodily movements are not coordinated. The patient might not give us the best jaw relation when we are recording it. So such particular patients may require adequate like frequent relining and rebasing procedures since the jaw relation will be not at the 
at most care is not taken during the jaw relation or the perfect jaw relation is not obtained for that particular reason we need to relay in the dentures frequently so such things may happen in few cases where salivation is more because of such diseases or disorders so there during impression procedures we have to use something like local anesthetics or we we'll use something like anticeulologs can be used to control the salivary flow for the better impression procedure so coming to an mcq most commonly common difficulty associated with neuromuscular disorder in construction of complete denture is recording jaw relation difficulty in impression making difficulties in arrangement of the posterior teeth and difficulties in border molding of the impression so this question has to be read little carefully here the most common difficulty associated is the point so the common difficulty is the key point here usually making an impression is also a difficult procedure or difficult task for such patients and uh, difficulties will be there in arrangement of teeth also even though we arrange it on the articulator the arrangement might not be proper inside the patient's mouth and then coming to the difficulty in border molding if the impression procedure is difficult at the same time even the border molding procedure will be difficult because both border molding and final impression go hand in hand then coming to the jaw relation recording so even though these three also make sense to the answer but the most appropriate the common difficulty and which will affect the denture mostly is our jaw relation so here in this question the answer will be recording the jaw relation because here the patient doesn't have a steady neck to give us the exact recordings of the maxillomandibular relationships then next coming to the age of the patient how does it even matter the age of the patient as i said in the previous section that age is a matter in complete denture because both the extremes of age are going to be affected in complete dentures even though if it is not too young in case of like aggressive periodontitis the decades are like around 40th decade to 60th decade so both 40th and 60th have different minds mindsets where a 40th decade person will go or will have an higher demand of aesthetics whereas a 60th decade person will have a demand of function comfort is of more importance to that particular age group so again it differs so the younger age people have more demanding or they are more demanding and the healing capacity of the tissue is more when compared to that of the 60th decade so younger people even though are there are some ulcerations or some mucosal changes or sequelae of the denture wearing can be taken care of and it heals off very easily but in cases like older age people where the healing capacity is compromised again it is a issue so in such particular things we need to know the age difference or like the age of the patient is very much important so depending upon the age we plan the treatment plan as i said so example if a young patient is given with the dentures of at most function but there is no aesthetic the patient is not going to accept the denture in a better way so the denture prognosis mainly depends on the acceptance of the patient if the patient himself or herself is not ready to wear the dentures then there is no point in giving the properly functioning denture to the particular patient similar way a old age person you give a beautiful aesthetics make them look more younger like 20 years younger but still there is no function aesthetics to that particular group is of not important so they want the function they want the comfort zone so again the dentures won't be well accepted by the patient and this leads to the failure of the complete denture fabrication next coming to the point as face facial expression uh, the facial expression mainly tells us about two different things one is the mental attitude of the patient towards you or towards the dentures or whatever so the pleasant attitude of the patient gives you a pleasant smile the moment the patient comes with an expression of that and the patient smile with a very weird crooked smile or something with a questionable prognosis they might have a different facial expression towards you then coming to the some disorders which are associated like bell's palsy trigeminal neuralgia such ne neural disorders are affected or the facial expressions are nothing but the signs of such particular diseases so the muscle tone will be lost in that particular region so you should have an idea this particular facial expression will give you the uh, symptom or the 
thought of changing the muscle tone of the patient whether it can be improvised to make a successful complete denture or not so as i said the mental attitude of the patient can be judged with the facial expression so the mental attitude the if the patient patient is ideal philosophical if he is ready to take the uh, dentures in a very good pleasing manner then the patient will have a better facial expression so no questions or no queries about the or he is not questioning the ability of the dentures over here or the dentist over here then coming to the muscle tone plus the disorders of the nerves coming to the complexion of the patient why do we know, have to know whether the patient is of a black or a white race or which color how does it even matter of course it will matter because it helps us in the shade selection of the teeth so a darker person cannot be given a yellowish shade of teeth so a darker person cannot be given a very bright teeth so a fair person cannot be given a more whiter teeth so there is a different shade taboos or shade tabs for particular complexion that particular shade has to be selected the complexion of the skin or the patient not only tells us about the particular shade to be selected but also it tells us about the different conditions like whether the patient is anemic or whether he is having a jaundice like lemon yellow color of the skin pale color is an anemic symptom so in that particular cases we have to take care of the nutritional values or the in case of uh, jaundice we have to take care of the medical history which the patient has to give a follow up of then coming to the speech so it is very important uh, if we can rectify or make a record of the patient speech before the construction of the dentures uh, so if you can ask for the patient for the before recordings when the pa patient was dentulous is okay even though if we are not having that particular uh, clipping or recording we can just ask for the uh, or we can just record and keep the audio recording of the patient to show the patient that after wearing a denture how the phonation has been improved so phonation or the speech is a very important point for people like public speakers singers and teachers so these are few categories of people where they have given the speech at most important uh, criteria this will be their priority they don't want aesthetics they don't want function they just want the phonation to be at its perfect at its most important point so if by chance the recording is made uh, to and keep it as an uh, uh, you know like an evidence or for the safer side of the dentist to show that the improvisation has been happened after making the dentures in case if the phonation has not improved if there is you know more alteration in the sound of the patient which is not pleasing to the patient or which the patient is not accepting we can redo the dentures and correct it accordingly we can even match the audio clipping during the time of trying and make the final processing so that there is no redoing of the final processes again and again and in case of any speech alterations to be made can be done example hypernasality can be done and even the hoarseness of the voice can be created so hypernasality in cases of the palatal paralysis palatal musculature paralysis and in hoarseness cases paralysis of the vocal cords plus excessive smoking also causes the hoarseness few people want this identity they want this particular thing hypernasality they want and hoarseness they want to be inculcated in the speech thing they, that is their identity now so in that particular thing we can add up this qualities like hypernasality and hoarseness of the voice coming to the personality of the patient why what is the requirement why do we want to know the personality of the particular patient so again it helps us to determine what kind of the dentures the patient is willing for example if he is an executive he or she is an executive they would like to have a aesthetics as priority plus the arrangement of the teeth differs here 
and even the selection of the teeth differs like we go for more rounder uh, like rounded and shorter teeth more polished aesthetically like example like ipn teeth we go for more aesthetic wise part of the teeth if the person is someone who is more masculine or ruggedly a uh, person if he is a labor or something where function keeps is more uh, keeps the more priority function so we keep for more larger teeth functionally good teeth have to be selected in such patients